Good morning and welcome. It's time to find our seats. If there are any uh, younger ones that want to come up and participate in our, our time at Glow Kids, go ahead and head this way. And Mr. Bill is going to lead us. So it's time for us to get started. We have some time with our kids in the morning before we begin our worship. So here it is. I'm going to hand it over to Bill. Good morning, kids. How you doing this morning? Good. Good. We're going to sing a few songs. Tell me, do you know the story about 12 spies? Do you know what they did? What did they do, Enrique? They went over into Egypt, I mean into the, uh, Canaan, and the 12 came back, and how many of them said, we can, God's with us and we can take them? Two. Two said they were good, 10 said they were bad. So we're going to sing that song, okay? I don't know I'm supposed to do this. Uh, there were 12 spies that spied on Canaan, 10 were bad and 2 were good. What did they see when they spied on Cain? Ten were bad and two were good. Some saw giants big and tall. Some saw grapes of clusters fall. Some saw God's rule over all. Ten were bad and two were good. Can you do it faster than that? You can? Let's do it faster. There were twelve spies that spied on Cain, and ten were bad, and two were good. What did they see when they spied on Cain? Ten were bad, and two were good. Some saw giants big and tall. Some saw grapes of clusters fall. Some saw God's rule over all. Ten were bad, and two were good. One more time. There were twelve spies that spied on Cain, and ten were bad, and two were good. What did they see when they spied on Cain? Ten were bad, and two were good. Some saw giants big and tall. Some saw grapes of clusters fall. Some saw God's rule over all. Ten were bad and two were good. There you go. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. What are we doing? What are we today? We're happy, aren't we? We're happy today. Okay. I'm happy today. Oh, yes, I'm happy today. In Jesus Christ, I'm happy today because he's taken all my sins away and why I'm happy today. I'm singing today. Oh yes, I'm singing today. In Jesus Christ, I'm singing today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm singing today. I'm praying today. Oh yes, I'm praying today. In Jesus Christ, I'm praying today because he's taken all my sins away and that's why I'm praying today I'm happy today oh yes I'm singing today in Jesus Christ I'm praying today because he's taken all my sins away and that's why I'm happy today why are we happy today Axel huh because we're doing good? Okay. That's a good thing to be happy about. Enrique. Uh, God has taken our sins away. Good job. Hey, Seth, why are you happy today? For being good? I bet you're always good, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's all stand up. We're going to do this one fast, okay? I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up. Tied, tangled up. Just to do it faster. Okay. The fastest we can. All right. We go fast first and then the fastest first after that. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied, tangled up in God. Oh yeah, all right, the fastest we can do it. 
How many of you got that? <laughs> okay, before we sing our last song, we want to recognize somebody. Somebody for 1 Corinthians 15 57. Miss Clara, come up here and get you. This one too. Um, can, we too? can we do it fast too? Sure. Uh, huh? The Texas one too. Absolutely. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the gun, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the end. But I'm in the Lord's army, yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I. Good job. All right. Who wanted to do it Texas style? Texas style. Okay. You ready? You got your belt buckles on? Huh? I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes. Ha! I'm in the Lord's army, yee-haw! I'm in the Lord's army, yee-haw! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army, yee-haw! Good job, guys. Good job. All right, you can go to your seats. <clears throat> Let's all stand as we uh, have our call to worship. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, starting in verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Amen. Let's have a prayer. Father, we come to you this morning. And Father, we pray that our worship to you will be acceptable. That you will give, be given the honor and the glory of the, for being the creator of the ends of this earth. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for all the blessings that we have in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Let's all sing. The soul, O Lord, we praise thy name. Above all earth's domain. Will magnify thy name above in majesty supreme. We praise thy name, O Lord, as we in one accord to laud and magnify thy 
thy name forevermore. All hail the King of kings, our praise to him take we to kneel before his majesty at his great home on high. He reigns forevermore on heaven's golden shore. We'll sing his praises through the ages evermore. Oh, praise the Lord each day as we his word obey. We worship and adore his name, his praises ever sing. All hail to him above in deity and love. Oh, praise his blessed holy name forevermore. Be seated. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise him, angels in the height. Sun and moon rejoice before him. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, for he has spoken. Worlds his mighty voice obeyed, laws which never shall be broken, for their goddess he hath made. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For he is glorious, never shall his promise fail. God has made his saints victorious, sin and death shall not prevail. Hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. God of our salvation, host on high his power proclaim, heaven and earth and all creation, Lord, and magnify his name, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. sing Ballard with great Jehovah. Thou art worthy, great Jehovah. Thou art worthy, mighty God. So um, now would be a good time to pick up your communion packet out in the foyer at the round table. 
this morning I'm going to read to help prepare us for the Lord's Supper I'm going to be reading 1st John chapter 4 verses 7 through 15 that's 1st John chapter 4 verses 7 through 15 dear friends let us love one another for love comes from God everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God whoever does not love does not know God because God is love this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into this world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all the many, many blessings that you bestowed upon each and every one of us, and Lord, we're most thankful for the grace that you bestowed upon us through the death of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray now that you'll be with each and every one of us as we take this bread, that we remember the sacrifice that Christ made on that cross, his broken body, which this bread represents. Help us, Lord, to consider these things and to remember the great sacrifice that was made for each and every one of us. Lord, bless, bless this bread now as we partake of it and help us to do it in a manner pleasing to you. And all these things we ask in Christ's most holy name. Amen. thanks for the cup Lord we come to you again praying Lord that you will bless this cup this fruit of the vine which represents your son's blood that was shed for each and every one of us and Lord help us to think back to that cross and the sacrifice he made and all this we ask in your son's most holy name Amen Just as a, a uh, reminder, we're going now to have the offering, and there's several different ways that you can uh, make your offering. Either put it in the boxes at the back, uh, or mail it to the church, or go online and follow the instruction on the church website for your electronic offering. Uh, before we make the offering today, I'm going to uh, read from Acts 2. Verses 42 through 47. That's Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. <clears throat> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts they broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved let's pray dear Heavenly Father we pray that you'll be with us now as we all considering uh, offering to the work here and Lord we, we pray that you'll fill our hearts and, and help us to, to know the needs of our brothers and sisters and, and, and come forward with whatever we can to help them in their time of need. Father, we also pray that, you, that we're mindful of those in our community and around the world, and we pray that all the offering funds that we give today will go to spread your gospel in these places. 
And all this we ask in Christ's most holy name. Amen. Before Nick brings the lesson this morning, the saint Zion's glorious son. On Zion's glorious summit stood a numerous host redeemed by blood. They hemmed their kings in strength divine. I heard the song and strove to join. I heard the song and strove to All who suffer sword or flame For truth or Jesus' lovely name Shout victory now and hail the Lamb And bow before the great I am And bow the great while everlasting ages roll, eternal love shall feast their soul, and sings the bless forever new, rise in succession to their view, rise in succession to their Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts on high adored, who like me thy place should sing. O Almighty King, Good morning. We are so thankful that everyone has made the choice to be with us this morning. Um, whether you're here in person or joining us online, we want to welcome you, and we are so thankful you're here. This morning we're continuing our series called Life's Healing Choices, and it falls along with Celebrate Recovery, which is a Christ-centered 12-step recovery program. And so throughout the series, if you do have any questions about CR, um, feel free to seek out myself or my wife, Megan, um, and we can point you in the right direction. So as we've gone through this series, we've, we've looked at the first three choices to finding healing from our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And those choices so far have been, number one, to admit our need, admit the need that I can't fix my problems, my struggles, my pain on my own. I'm powerless to control these things, so I'm in need of help. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, blessed are those who are humble enough to know their need for God's help and God's strength to find healing. And so choice one is to admit that help, that need for help. Choice two is we need to stop our denial and get help, seek out help. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Those who mourn their broken situation because they find they will find comfort from God. You see, grief is a pathway to comfort, but denial will block us from the healing and the help that we so desperately need. 
Denial is wearing the mask while saying, oh, I'm fine. And that's only going to keep us in the pit. It's going to keep you from, from getting that help that you need. And so we encourage everyone to put away the denial and to realize three truths about God. Number one is that God exists. Number two is that he absolutely cares about you and you matter to him. And number three is to believe that he has the power to change you and your situation, the power to help you and to heal you. And the third choice we talked about last time is we is letting go of control. We have to let go of trying to handle our brokenness on our own. We have to let go and commit to him, to trust God 100%, to give him both hands and to give him full control. Matthew 5, verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And as we discussed last time, meekness does not equal weakness. It Meekness is submitting our strength to the control of the one who's directing us. It's submitting our strength to the will of God. And that brings us to the fourth choice, coming clean. We need to come clean about our sins. I want you to imagine something with me. I want you to imagine that you get up tomorrow morning and you decide that it's just going to be a day like any other. And so you get up, you go through your regular routine, you get into your vehicle and you drive to work. And when you arrive at work, you're going through your day and all seems normal until one person that you know comes to you and says, I really need to talk to you privately. And the look on their face kind of concerns you. And so you decide to go with them and, and you're wondering what's going on. And you step into a room together and they sit down and you sit down across from them and, and you look them in the eye and, and they have this really disturbed look. And, and they said, I've been doing some searching. I've, I've been doing some digging into your past and I want you to know that I know everything. I know what you've done. Now let me ask you, if someone said that to you tomorrow morning, what would be going through your mind? What thoughts would be racing through your mind? How would you react to a statement like that? And would any of us be sitting there thinking, well, I really hope they haven't figured that out. I really hope they didn't uncover that. Will there be anything in your mind that you hope they haven't found? Is there anything that you hope will remain concealed from view. Family, I think if we're honest, I think we can all say that we all have regrets. We all have something in our past that we wish we wouldn't have done, that we wish we wouldn't have said, things that we wish we could go back in time and undo. We all have regrets, but the question is, what do we do with them? Because regrets are often accompanied with a feeling of guilt. And the question is, what have you done with that guilt? Have you dealt with that properly? Or have you denied your guilt? Or maybe you've suppressed it or blamed others for it. Have you tried to rationalize it or run from it? If you've ever tried to run from it, then you know we, we can't outrun uh, guilt. And so you and I, if we do have past regrets, we might as well deal with them. We might as well face them and deal with them properly. Because if we don't, chances are we aren't going to find healing from our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups. If we don't deal with it properly, chances are we'll be stuck in the past. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, family, there is freedom that is to be found in a heart that is pure. There is hope to be found in a heart that is pure. Unresolved guilt, unresolved regret will block you and I from knowing that, that kind of hope and that kind of freedom. Listen to what John Baker said. John Baker, again, is one of the founders of Celebrate Recovery, but this is what he has to say about unresolved guilt. It's like driving a car by always looking in the rearview mirror. A rearview mirror is helpful because it gives us perspective. Looking at our past gives us perspective, too. But if we look only at our past, we never get to see the present or look forward to the future. Some people focus on the past to the extent that the, their rearview mirror gets bigger than their windshield. With this kind of driving forward progress is nearly impossible. In fact, a crash is likely in the near future. Have you dealt properly with your past regrets and your past guilt? If not, you may be headed for disaster. If not, chances are you aren't going to be able to find the healing from your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we read about King David. and David is typically known as the man after God's own heart. He's a man of faith, a man of passion to make sure that God and God's honor is upheld. 
But in 2 Samuel chapter 11, we find David following the lead of his flesh rather than following the lead of God. We probably all know the story. He's out on the roof and he spots Bathsheba. He sees this woman who belongs to another man, but Bathsheba catches his eye. And rather than fleeing the temptation, he actually dives into it. And then he sleeps with her while her husband is away at war, while her husband is away fighting for David's kingdom. And Bathsheba becomes pregnant with David's child. Now in this moment, David has a choice. He can either deal with his sin, confess what he's done, and try to move on, or he can hide it and conceal it. And as you probably know, David chooses chooses to hide it. He summons Bathsheba's husband Uriah from the battlefield, brings him in, sits down with him, and asks him how the war is going, and then tells him to go home to his wife. Well, we find out that Uriah is a man of character. He's not going to go and stay with his wife while the rest of the men are still in battle. And so he goes and sleeps at the entrance with the rest of the servants. When David finds this out, he calls him back in, and this time he gets him drunk, hoping that that would soften his standards, hoping that he'll go home this time, and that way the sin can be concealed. But yet again, Uriah does the noble thing. So this time we find this man who is credited with writing so many of the beautiful praise psalms. We find David sitting down. He pens a different kind of letter. And this is no worship psalm. This is a psalm designed to bring honor, not a psalm designed to bring honor to God, but rather what he pens is a letter to bring about Uriah's murder. He sits down and he writes this letter instructing Joab, the leader of the army, to bring Uriah to the fiercest point of the battle. And when things get heated up, everyone withdraw for him, from him so that Uriah will die. And so as most kings would do, he probably sealed the letter with his own seal and sent it in the hands of Uriah. That's one of the really sickening parts. David puts it in the hands of Uriah and instructs him to deliver it to Joab. And then as Uriah faithfully carries out this order, he has no idea that he's carrying his own death warrant. And what's really scary is it doesn't seem that David has paused and considered what he's doing, that he's plotting the murder of a loyal friend so that he can conceal his sin. Well, we probably know that when Joab gets the letter, he follows the instructions and Uriah loses his life because David was determined to hide his regrets, to hide his guilt. Well, Bathsheba mourned the death of her husband, and then David takes her to be his wife. And when she gives birth to their son, and most likely, there's probably some people in the kingdom who assume it's Uriah's baby, and that's exactly what David was hoping would happen. He had swept the guilt under the carpet. But God wasn't done with David yet. Family, do you have any unresolved guilt, any unresolved regrets? Because King David, even a man after God's own heart, King David did. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, it says, So the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb, and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man. But instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed, any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole and for having no pity. You see, God sent the prophet Nathan to present this parable to David, and the parable essentially holds a mirror up to him. But he doesn't recognize his own reflection. He becomes angry. He says, this man must pay for what he's done. He must die. He must pay four times over. And then in verse 7 it reads, Then Nathan said to David, You are that man. David knew his sin. David knew that he had slept with another man's wife. David knew that he had plotted to conceal it through lies. He knew that he planned and carried out the murder of a loyal friend to cover his lies. But somehow it seems that David, he's able to push it down, push it down deep and try to move on without dealing with it. And God was not satisfied with that. God was going to hold a mirror in front of David and sometimes I need to ask myself, is there a mirror I need to be looking into? 
It's through something that I've been involved in, something that I've struggled with that I haven't dealt with properly. Because if I haven't, how will I find healing from my hurts, habits, and hang-ups? Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It was time for David to deal with his sin properly, and there were consequences because of what had happened. But now that his sin was out, now that he... Now that we find him facing what he's done, we find David sitting down again to pen something else. And this time, it's Psalm 51. Beginning in verse 1, he says, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You'll be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. You hear what David is saying in this passage? He's saying, I know my sins. And God, I need you to cleanse me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to restore joy, to create in me a pure heart, a clean heart. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Family, is there something in your life that you need to deal with? Are there any regrets or guilts that you've tried to conceal? Is it time to come clean? Psalm 32, beginning in verse 1, says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Family, there is hope, and there is freedom in a heart that is pure. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But unresolved guilt, sin that hasn't been dealt with, will keep you in prison. It will keep you trapped in the past as you try to do life staring in the rearview mirror. And so this morning, if you have something that, you, that you're ready to face, ready to stop, to, to stop and just deal with, ready to move past, um, Celebrate Recovery offers five steps, five recommendations on what to do. And the first is to take a personal moral inventory. In this step, you, you spend time in some deep prayer, in some reflective thought, and you think about your actions in life, your choices. You think about both your good and your bad actions, and you try to keep keep it balanced as best as possible and you ask God to reveal to you any unresolved guilt in your life and then you write it all down both good and bad and CR says to write it down because it forces you to be specific and as you see these things emerge that you wish weren't there rather than go and despair remember that we serve a God who is full of grace and mercy and the second step is to accept responsibility for our faults if the fault is yours. Now, I say that because there are times when terrible things are done against you. Sometimes we can become the victim of someone else's sin. In that case, the blame does not fall on you. But when the blame is yours, be honest about it. Don't rationalize your guilt, don't deceive yourself, and don't blame others if the guilt is yours. And the third step is to ask for God's forgiveness. 1 John 1, I'd love for you to turn over there And if this passage is not highlighted in your Bible, I would recommend it. Um, Highlight it, underline something to make it stand out. But 1 John 1, beginning in verse 6, holds great promises for us. It says, If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now that word for cleanses is in the present tense in the Greek, which, mean, which gives it the meaning of it continually cleansing, continually purifying us. So let's continue in verse 8. It says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And then I think one of the most beautiful passages um, in the New Testament that I cling to is verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful, even when I'm not. And he is just, even though I haven't been. He is just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And one thing that we need to remember about this passage in 1 John chapter 1, or the entire book of 1 John, is that it's written to believers. It's written to people who are already Christians. It's written to people who have been cleansed by the blood of Christ, but find themselves stumbling from time to time, and still need that continual purifying blood of Christ. And so family, if you have not yet had the gospel story become part of your story, if you're not yet a Christian, then this great promise here in 1 John, this great hope, is not yet yours but it can be. You need the blood of Jesus Christ in your life because without it, you have no hope. Without it, there's no healing from our brokenness. Without it, 1 John chapter 1 doesn't yet apply to you. But that invitation is there, and it's there today. And so if the gospel story is not yet part of your story, you need to respond to this beautiful gift of salvation. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. True healing is found in Christ and Christ alone. And you need the gospel story in your life story. The fourth step is to admit your faults to another person. And that's where this gets scary for some. You may stop and you may think, why not just stop at step three, right? Why not just stop at step three? Confess to God, ask for forgiveness, and just be done there. Why does this have to involve somebody else? Well, It's because when we confess these things to another believer, and don't miss that, another believer, they kneel at the throne of God on your behalf. In James chapter 5, verse 16, we are given great hope when it says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Then it says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. And so you need to be looking for a person to confess confess to, a person, a righteous person. In other words, a believer, someone who takes their walk with Christ seriously. And we're told that there's healing found when we do this. And the great benefit of this, the the ironic thing about it, is when you do take that bold step out and you're willing to confess your sins to someone else, oftentimes you'll find out that, oh, I'm, I'm not alone in these things. I'm not the only one who struggles with things like this. Oftentimes you'll find that the person understands perfectly what you're going through. So family, confess your sins to one another, but there, there is a word of caution here. Be wise in who you choose to confess your sins to. Be sure that they are a mature believer, because it is the prayer of a righteous person that is powerful and effective. And be sure that they are trustworthy with what you tell them. And I hope this would be obvious, because it's a very good recommendation, but men choose a man to confess to, and women choose a woman to confess to. And then the fifth step is to accept God's forgiveness and live in hope and freedom that his forgiveness brings. Because when we do that, when we take God at his word and we believe that the blood of Jesus Christ is enough, when we believe these things, the past guilt and the past regret, can't hold us any longer because the blood of Christ has made our hearts pure. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. When we accept God's forgiveness, when we stop locking our gaze in the rearview mirror, but instead we look forward as we pick up our cross and follow our King, when we do this, we can lock our gaze on the precious promise of Matthew 5 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so, family, as we close this lesson, do you feel guilt? Do you feel stuck because of past guilt? Do you feel stuck because of some regrets that have been dealt, you haven't been dealt with? Is it time this morning for you to come clean? Because the hope is found in Jesus Christ, and he can cleanse any stain, any sin. Don't sweep it under the rug like David did. Don't try to hide and conceal it. Don't run from it. Bring it to the foot of the cross and find the hope and healing that only Jesus can bring. 
If there's anyone here this morning that has any kind of need and wants to share that with the family, you're welcome to do that this morning. There will be an elder in the front and one in the back. Go wherever you're comfortable. And if there's anyone here this morning that wants to become a Christian, to have that purifying blood of Jesus Christ to come into your story and to give you hope and to give you a pure heart, you can do that this morning by believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth that he is your Lord. He's the one you follow. And if you're following him, then you have to repent, come clean, and let go of sinful ways. And if you want to become a Christian, you need to be baptized into Jesus Christ, where we mimic the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection by being buried into water. And when we are raised out of that watered grave, we are forgiven of our sins. We are made pure. And we have the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us all the way home. If there's anyone that needs to respond this morning, please come now as we stand and sing. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have the Lord my side. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Be seated. A few announcements that we have um, next Sunday evening or afternoon will be our truck trunk or treat here at the building at five o'clock. Uh, so if you want to participate in that, well, uh, please do so. Uh, dress up in a costume and come or just come as yourself. But uh, um, anyway, at five o'clock next, uh, next Sunday evening. Uh, those who are on our sick list, uh, we uh, Jesse Miller uh, has informed us that he has kidney failure and uh, is asking for prayers. I'm not exactly sure uh, what that entails or what that involves, but we certainly want to remember Jesse. Uh, Glenda Reynolds, that's Heath Dale's aunt, uh, passed away and. Uh, her funeral, I believe, was last week, um, and she is, uh, uh, to be remembered, she was uh, Phyllis's uh, sister, so we want to pray for that family. Yvonne Jackson is at home from Tomball Hospital and is doing better. Linda Jurgens is going to have uh, knee surgery, knee replacement surgery soon. Do you know when yet? the 9th of November, and uh, so this is her second time around, so uh, this one won't be any problem at all. Will it? <laughs> so anyway, we certainly want to remember Linda in our prayers. Edna Dean is having trouble uh, controlling her blood sugar, and uh, along with her other issues, uh, she is not feeling well at all. Paul Hendrickson... Um, has been accepted to the Cancer Center in Tulsa, and so that's where he's going to go for treatment, and so we want to pray for him and his family. Uh, we also want to remember Linda and Lonnie in our prayers and our continued struggles with her health, and then also Diane and Craig Rabb. Uh, it's my understanding that Craig uh, has decided not to continue doing more any more treatments, and so uh, they're looking into hospice at this time. Uh, and lastly, Jim Dubchek, that's Jared's 
brother, not his twin, but his older brother, uh, passed away last week, and uh, uh, the funeral is scheduled for this Tuesday in Dallas area, uh, along with uh, Jera and Jera's sister. Jera's sister married Jim, and so it's uh, the whole family is kind of intertwined. So. Uh, it was a certainly is a tragedy, and we want to remember them in our prayers. I believe that's all I have, unless somebody else has anything. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, you are our awesome God, and I pray and thank you so much for the fact that we can call you Father, that you listen to us, and you hear us in our struggles and you help us and answer us in your, in your will and in your time and Lord we lift up a number of people this morning uh, asking for for you your hand healing hand to be on them we pray for Jesse uh, Miller uh, the family of Glenda Reynolds and her loss and give them strength and peace and comfort Father, we're thankful that Yvonne is doing better and is at home. We pray for the upcoming surgery of Linda uh, in a few weeks and pray that it will go well and that her recovery will be easy and quick. Lord, we pray for Edna and her continued struggles and, and give her some comfort. And uh, we pray that some way, somehow, they can find some ways to make her feel better. And we are thankful that Paul is, is going to be receiving treatments and pray that that will go well. And Father, we pray for the Duke Check family and the loss of, of Jim and pray that you will give them the peace and the comfort that they need in, in the troublesome time that they're having. Father, we pray for Lonnie and Linda and her continued uh, struggles with her illness and we also pray for Diane and Craig and give him peace and comfort. Father we thank you for this family here in Magnolia. We thank you for the love that we have for each other. We pray and thank you that that we are willing and interested in helping each other in the struggles that we all have. And Father I pray and thank you for the fact that we have been able to remain healthy and are so appreciative of that. Father, we pray for this country and the upcoming elections that will be on us soon. We pray that everyone will vote their conscience. And Father, we pray that men will be and women will be installed that, that focus on doing your will, that have you as part of the principles of how they live their lives. Father, we pray that that the anger and the hate that seems to be going on, that, that we can get through that. And we can, even if we disagree, we can love one another. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for all the blessings that we have through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand and sing the first and second verse of Redeem. Brother Scott Carpenter will dismiss us. Your soul, sweet as a song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow have vanished away. I, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine. All to him I now resign. I have been redeemed. Great is my joy as onward I go. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. My praises shall flow, 
I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. I have been redeemed. Our Heavenly Father, you're a wonderful and great God, and you're a loving God. We're so thankful that you established the church, that you allowed for us to have family that we can reach out to, that we can depend upon, that we can seek out when we have issues, that when we have sin in our lives, that they will be there for us that they'll be there to support us when we struggle in life, when we have a loss, when we're ill, and when we need encouragement. We're so thankful for this time that we were able to spend with you as we lifted up our voice in praise, as we studied your word. as we gathered around the table and spent time remembering your son and the sacrifice that he provided for us through the shedding of his blood on that cross. But more importantly, he was raised from that grave and lives now with you in heaven. And we look forward to that day when we can join you in heaven. We ask that you be with us now as we depart from here. Help us all to travel home safely and come back at the next appointed time. But more importantly, help us to represent you in this world. For we know that there are many that do not know you. But may they know you through us. It's through your son's name we do pray. Amen.